the point is I, I want you to see the pacing of this, but right now these are just flashes. They're fragments. They're not scenes. We need more. All right. Hey everyone. We have another great coaching video for you today. Today we're talking about how to write a scene, how to think through your scenes. If you want to write great stories, you need to write great scenes, um, but not everyone knows how to do that. And today I give you a really simple process that I use to construct scenes from the ground up. Should be really helpful for you. By the way, we're using some terminology from my book, the right structure, it's right there, it's that one. If you want to learn more about story structure and how to craft scenes using structure, check out my book, The Right Structure. I'll put the link in the description. You can get a copy there. <laughs> That's it for me. Enjoy the video and we'll talk soon. You wanna look at your chapter? Yeah. All right, let me pull that up. All right. Let's talk about this. All right. So what's the purpose behind this kind of section, the scene? What do you mean, what's behind it? So there's a lot going on. She wakes up, reads the paper, does some trades, tries to buy some land, gets some fish, has a conversation about Bumpy's family, goes and fires a guy, has a meeting with their staff, had a business that she apparently is now running and then goes home, right? There's just like a lot of random things and I'm trying to figure out what, what you're trying to do with it. What I'm trying, I guess what I'm trying to do is sort of tell what it is Thelma's involved with. Okay. Is it too much, too many things in it? Definitely. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what I would keep because basically what I'm getting from this is that she's a smart, sharp woman. She's very abrupt. You know, she fires yeah. a guy, the guy just walks out like that whole business meeting scene. I don't think you should keep it. Okay. It doesn't make sense to me Okay. personally. Now I, I might be missing something, but I think that house is interesting. The fact that she's doing all these deals on the phone is interesting, but like, this isn't really a scene. You know what I mean? All of this is just all over the place and, and you're not like spending enough time really on any of them, any of these moments to make it work. Okay. okay. A scene should be 1,500 to 2,500 words long. Okay, this is 1,200 words long and it should focus on one thing, okay? So what I would do is I would choose one of these conversations that she has and focus in on it. Now it might be like she's doing these deals with her broker and with the real estate person. And then, and I'm, I don't hate that, you know, and I don't hate the bumpy conversation with the fish. I don't like her going into town and doing all that stuff because it's rushed. It feels very rushed. Okay. okay. I would just hone in here and slow down, you know, let's just look at this to here till the next morning. Okay. The next morning feels like a break. It's like a new scene. This should all take place in one day. Okay. And okay. if you want to steal from some things that are happening out after here, that's fine. You can put it into this day, but having her go to bed and then wake up feels weird, you know? Like one of the things that I really encourage writers to do when they're um, setting up their scenes is just think of it, think about it, the first scene in a film and, and think about how weird and disorienting it would be if she walked into her office and we see her reading the Wall Street Journal, okay, and going down the numbers of financial writers articles and Reuters news. She's like flipping through the Wall Street Journal and Reuters. And then all of a sudden it's the next morning. Like that would be an abrupt thing that wouldn't yeah. happen in a film because it would feel disorienting. And in the same way, it feels disorienting in writing. At the same time, I want more about the house, right? We're, we're having this long conversation with her broker, her real estate broker. Yeah. 
we have no idea where she is. You know, think about it from a film perspective again. They're talking to each other, but there's nothing on the screen, right? It's a black screen because you haven't told us where we are, right? Okay. Now, we see Dave maybe, and we see him in his office, I guess. There's no description, but we don't, you never even say said Thelma, right? So you need some more speaker tags. You also need some description, like said Thelma as she walked down to the dock. It was a beautiful day or it was a windy day or, you know, like just show us where she is. Maybe she's in her living room, you know? I don't have a problem with beginning with dialogue as long as you back up afterward and then give us some description about what's going on, you know, because we have no context. We, we, are, we are not seeing anything. We're just hearing. It's like almost like the radio. But even a radio show will give some description because people need to use their imagination to see what's going on, you know? And okay, so let's say that this is the scene. Let's say you're really going to focus on up to this point, you have 654 words right now. Like it, this needs to be at least 1500 words, okay? And there needs to be some kind of decision that's made. Just sharing that she's thinking about buying this land is not enough. Every good scene needs to have a dilemma. Okay, there's six elements of plot and every one of these needs to be in your story. Here's how I break down a scene, okay? I write down all these things, these six elements, exposition, citing incident. Are you familiar with these terms? Yeah. Some of them are. Okay. So right now, there's not really a story event. Like Thelma talks to people. That's the story event right now. That's not a very compelling event. Okay. What it should be is Thelma either decides to buy some land. Let me just redo this. Should be either or fails to buy some land. Now there's two ways to go about this, okay? Either she sees the land and likes it and decides she wants it, and that's the decision. Or she has already in a previous scene discovered this land, decided she likes it, and then she tries to buy it from Robert Kendall. And he calls and very rudely says, heck no, okay? And by the way, this is a meet cute, okay? Do you know what a meet cute is? No, I do not. So a meet cute in a love story is when the characters meet. It's a film term and it's just the characters meet and it's cute, okay? And that doesn't mean they like each other. They just meet in an interesting way, okay? They can hate each other. Mr. Darcy... And Elizabeth, they meet. He is really rude, says, there's no one I would dance with. She's tolerable, you know? And she just laughs at him. That's a meet cute, okay? And Thelma failing to buy some land and getting chewed out and Robert saying to her, I'm never selling you this land. You can take your money and shove it. That's a good meet cute. So... This, if you want to tell a love story, you know, the sooner you can do this, the better, because the meet cute is the inciting incident of a love story. All right. And, and it should be in the first one to four scenes. All right. So if you have it here, that's great. That's awesome. All right. So let's say that, you know, just for an example, that's what happens in this scene. So exposition. Thelma is at her home, at her family estate, and is talking to her real estate broker. Inciting incident is she tries, you know, it would be fun if maybe the inciting incident is her offer is rejected. It makes her mad. These are also called progressive complications. And it's just things are getting more complicated. Choose out. Her broker demands to 
talk to the seller. Dilemma. So a dilemma is a choice, right? Between two options. Take no for an answer or uh, create a fuss with Robert Kendall. Climax, she creates a fuss, of course, because she's Selma. Gets into a fight. She hates Robert Kendall, right? This is just one way you can do it. And, and I'm not saying you have to do it like I said, but this is the scene, right? This is the beginning of a scene. This is a fragment of a scene. We see that she wants to buy some land. We have no idea why she wants to buy some land. We have no conflict, you know, there's not really an inciting incident. You know, there's a lot missing from this. And I imagine later on, you open that up and you talk more about it. We don't have time for that. You need to yeah. do this now, you know? And, you know, this is where storytelling is different than real life, right? Because yeah. in real life, this might happen over months. This conversation and back and forth, like she's having a call with her broker and then a call with her New York stockbroker and then going to fire a guy and, you know, talking with Bumpy, you know, like that's more realistic in real life. But in a story, when you're thinking about show, don't tell is we don't care about all that stuff. We don't need to know that stuff. What we need to know is she gets into a fight with Robert Kendall and she hates his guts right? Yeah. That's what we need to know. And we need to know why. We you think know. you need to tell why this uh, gap in their relationship today, or sometimes is it better to not tell everything? Sure. Which way you think is best? Yeah, I think, so they have a history, they have a past. The past is that they were getting married and he didn't show up. Gotcha. You know, okay, you definitely should say that she is triggered, okay? That that brings up some emotion. She has some kind of physical response to that. She drops the phone. The broker is, Miss Thelma, Miss Thelma. She's trying to catch her breath. She sees a couple of details, a wedding cake that was uneaten or a cake that was uneaten. You can be vague about it. Yeah. She sees some flashbacks because she's experienced some trauma. And so she's seeing some of that. That's fine. You can do that for sure. And, it, and you actually have to do something. Like you can't just go right by that. Does she know, by the way, that Robert Kendall was the seller? No, Robert Kendall is buying this piece of property. He ends up buying it rather than her. Oh, she, okay. So they both want this piece of land. Okay. Let me fix that. All right. So she's at her family estate. She's talking to a broker about this land that she bought. You should talk about why she likes it, right? Okay. Why she wants the land. Okay. She wants the land because she knows Robert wants it. Okay. She wants the land and she wants it. Because she has two that reasons. way she locks him in where his land cannot be attached to another piece of property. Okay. You just have to describe the land okay. and talk about its qualities or lack thereof. But of course, there was only one reason she wanted it. Would you go and explain why she hates him nope. at this point? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I wouldn't. You could. I mean, I think... You know, these kinds of details are gold, right? Yeah. They're dramatic gold. And, and sometimes you get more payoff by keeping them from the reader, hinting at them, than okay. by sharing all your secrets. You want to entice the reader a little bit and play with it. So I wouldn't share it until later. I would hint at it for sure. Yeah. But you got to give more of this. I mean, like, we're just jumping into the deep end. It, we need some more context and exposition, right? Citing incident, her offer is rejected. Robert Kendall gets it. That 
triggers her. So we need to see that she's furious. Okay. Show her fury in a paragraph or two, like really dwell on this. Okay. One of the things that you're doing is you're just flying through this scene. You're going so quickly and you need to settle down, dwell on these responses because her physical response is really important. Okay. She yells at her broker, fires him, whatever, rehires him, demands that she puts him in touch with the seller. I think it would be interesting for them to have a conversation in this scene. For her and Robert have a conversation? Yeah. Okay. All right. Is there any way for me to print this? Yeah, I'll send this to you. Okay. And again, you need to show this. Like she's getting on the phone with him. He answers. They're talking. She has physical responses to this. Describe her surroundings too. Okay. So we need more description from you. Dilemma. Does she give up? Does she take no for an answer? Or does she dig in? Create a fuss. It's a pretty much of a done deal. There's not much she can do about it now. He's accepting Robert's off. Knowing Thelma, she'll find something to create a fuss about, right? Yeah. So she's going to create some kind of fuss. Even if she can't get the land she wants, she's going to do something. So she decides to do that, right? Okay. Now you can change this. You can do whatever you want. The point is I, I want you to see the pacing of this, okay? Okay. This 200 words is really all we're focusing on, okay. all right? You have 1,200 words here. I want you to take 200 and turn it into 1,500. Okay. Minimum, 1,500 to 2,500, okay? Because that's what you need to have this level of drama. And then that's a good scene, you know? Yeah. And if you want, you can take the... You can take other elements of this. I mean, the conversation with Bumpy or the firing the guy, you know, you can turn that into a scene. But right now, these are just flashes. They're fragments. They're not scenes, okay? Okay. And we need, we need more, all right? So if you were to take, for example, this until he walks out the door, 157 words, that should be 1,500 words minimum, okay? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This is an event. This is the story event. If you want to tell this story event, then tell it, you know, don't just quickly describe and, and they get the, all the, the facts down and then he leaves, you know, one, that's not realistic. It's also not, you're not telling a story there. Okay. And to be honest, I don't know. I don't know about that whole section. I, I don't know if I would get into that. Now you get to choose, but it's not connecting with me and the story you're trying to tell. All right. All right. Cool. I, I am excited about this. This is good. And, you know, this thing that she's got with Robert Kendall is really good. It's interesting. And I would press into that more and really explore it. Give okay. it the words it needs. All right. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Good luck. Let me know how it goes. Thank you very much.